congregation is invited to rise. On this day, we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus. Uh, and in so doing, we also think about our own baptism into Christ. And so today, that will be the focus uh, of our readings and many of our hymns as well uh, as our sermon for today. We order our worship today with divine service setting three, as it's found on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. And upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to turn to the insert in your bulletin where you will find the introit for today. Our introit comes to us from Psalm 2, and we read it responsively as printed. Behold my servant whom I uphold. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give thee the nations. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage. And the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. And dash them in pieces like a father's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice for his wrath is quickly kindled. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold my servant whom I uphold.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Everybody be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 43. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Sheba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has any dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise and sing our alleluia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory be to thee. As the people were in expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not, un, not worthy to tie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, so that he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened, And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to We confess our common faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 192. We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're seated at this time for our sermon hymn. Our sermon hymn is number 405. 405.
the texts that call for our attention this Lord's Day are both our gospel reading, the account of Jesus' baptism, where we hear the voice from heaven say, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. And also our Old Testament reading for today from Isaiah chapter 43, where God says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There are, as far as I know, only two ways that this state will recognize you as someone's child. The first, of course, is that you are literally, biologically, someone's child. Your mother and father conceived you. Your mother carried you for month after month. And your mother gave birth to you. You are their child by nature, right down to your genetic makeup. But there is that other way in which one can be legally recognized as someone's child, and that is through adoption. This process, as anyone who has ever been through it will tell you, often ends up a lot more complex, it seems, than the other way of becoming a person's child. But assuming that all of the legal loopholes are jumped through and all of the proper paperwork is filled out, the judge will, in the end, declare that one who is not by nature a child of another individual is now their child, legally. In our Gospel reading for today, we have an account that speaks about one who is a child of another solely based on nature. Jesus steps into the Jordan River, where John is baptizing many people. And after he had been baptized and was praying, we are told that the heavens opened up, and that the Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like a dove. And then a voice came from heaven and said, You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. And in this account, Jesus is not being chosen as God's son. For he has always been God's son. Now in this account, God is revealing that which is, rather than making something to be something that was not something. Yes, he is the eternally begotten son of God, this Jesus who we find in the river Jordan. The scriptures and the creeds all confess it. He was with God in the beginning. He has been and always will be the Son of God by his very nature. But of course, I suppose that truth was not very evident to most people that simply might have walked by Jesus as he was a child or a young man. It's not as if Jesus walked around with a constant glow surrounding his flesh. It's not as if even as, say, an eight-year-old boy that he spoke with an unusually low and boisterous voice that seemed to usher forth from the heavens. No, I suppose as most, to most people, he simply appeared to be a child who had parents named Joseph and Mary. And so today at his baptism, we see as God begins to reveal something that can only be known about Jesus primarily when Jesus or excuse me, when God the Father reveals it to someone. Our other readings for today, though, speak about the other way of becoming one's child. Our Old Testament reading speaks about how God chose the Old Testament people of Israel as his sons and daughters. And then our epistle reading talks about how God claims sons and daughters in our day and age through the sacrament of holy baptism. To be clear, in both cases, it is a case of adoption. You see, when God chose Israel, he wasn't saying that Israel had somehow just always been his child, and he was now revealing that to be the case. No, instead, he was choosing them. He was choosing those 12 sons of Jacob and their descendants as his children. He was adopting them. Likewise, in holy baptism, God is not simply revealing something that has always been. 
when he calls us his own, he's not saying that we were always his sons and daughters and that now he's just telling everyone else. Instead, what he's saying is quite the opposite in that case. He's saying that we were fatherless and motherless in terms of spiritual care, that we had no one to provide for us in that way. He is saying that he saw our lost condition and that he has now claimed us as his own. He has adopted us. Yes, he has made us his sons and daughters. He has chosen to provide for us everything that we would need in terms of life and salvation. Now, no doubt, there are miracles happening in our gospel reading. The miracle that God's Son was now in human flesh, the miracle that he was there in the Jordan River like all other flesh in that area seemed to be doing. But the miracle is not just that he is the Son of God, for that had always existed. The miracle is what the Son of God is actually doing. But the fact that you and I are called sons and daughters of God, now that is a miracle in and of itself. For there was nothing about us that should cause God to want to choose us. It's not that we were the most adorable orphans who just showed great potential. No, it was simply that he loved us. And that he couldn't see us go on any longer without proper guidance and care. To go back for a moment to the human realm, to be a parent of a biological child is something that sort of just is in one way. <laughs> the child is born and you are a parent. And while certainly many people struggle in their role as parents, none would doubt the fact that they have a responsibility to their child by the simple fact that that person is their child. And so in one sense, to take care of a son or daughter by nature, while being a good and holy and important thing, is not something most people would describe as an extraordinary good. It's just what should happen between a parent and child when things are well. However, when two people decide that they will adopt a child or children that are not their own, well, then that is kind of a whole different ball game, isn't it? There, we should be taken aback. That there is someone who would take on such a grand responsibility for another person when they have no legal obligation otherwise to do so. We should be in awe that they simply choose someone and they treat them as family. In the best situations of adoptions, the parents will often note that they really don't view their adopted children any differently than they view their own biological children if they have them. They treat them with the same care and concern and give them the same guidance. They pray for them with the same sincerity. They speak about them simply as their child without any equivocation. So it is with our God when it comes to us. You understand that God looks at you no different than he looks at his very own son, Jesus? That he has the very same love and care and affection for you that he does for him? You know, that's so true that he calls you a co-heir with Christ of all of the heavenly riches. Oh, of course, God knows the difference between his eternally begotten son and between you but the love that he has for you is so great that he treats you just as if you were also his son or daughter forever. In fact, in one odd way, we might say that God has even shown you and I more care than he has shown his own son. In this sense, at least, he gave up his son to die in order that you might live he gave up his own son to go and to suffer the brutality of earth in order that you might one day live as his child in a new heaven and a new earth. Yes, God loves you greatly. And that's why he says these things of you in our scripture readings for today. Listen again to what he says of you. He says, I have called you by name. You are mine. 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and to the waters they shall not overwhelm you. He says of you, you have been buried with my son in death, in order that you might be raised up by my glory to live again and to walk now in newness of life. He says to you, who were nothing but dead as sin, that now you should no longer consider yourselves dead to sin, but you should consider yourselves alive to Christ Jesus. Are you taken back by the love of your adopted father? Are you astounded to think that he actually chose you, even though he had no obligation to do so? Does your heart melt, knowing that he did absolutely everything necessary in order that you might be his child today and remain so forevermore? Well, it should. It should indeed. And yet, I suppose if we are honest, at times we must admit that we take our status as the children of God for granted. And I suppose in this way we're probably a lot like adopted children in the real world also. At least when the adoption goes well and that person simply becomes integrated into the family in a very normal type way. I suppose in those cases, at some point, everything can just seem so natural. It can seem like everything that that person has is something that they've always had. That person can forget the desires that existed, the tears that flowed and the expense that it took to ensure that they could have that life that they have right there in that moment. We too can be this way with God. For most of us, We've been adopted children of God for a very long time. We almost can't imagine any sort of other life. You know, we think it's pretty normal that when we confess our sins, we have a Father who forgives us every time. We think it's rather normal that we get invited week after week to come to a table where the eternal Son of God comes to us in His body and blood to give us forgiveness, life, and salvation. Times we can almost find it unremarkable that, yeah, yeah, God has promised us someday we will get to go and live with him in a new heaven and a new earth forever. But when we do that, we have become spoiled brats rather than humble, adopted children of God. So there are only two ways that one can be a child of God. The first is that you simply are a child of God by nature. Jesus was. He still is. But that category, that's as far as that one goes. Jesus is the only one who can fit into that. And so the other way to become a child of God is when God does something that he has no obligation to do. It is what happens when he, because of his desire for you to be saved, and because of the tears that have flowed down his face because of your lost condition, decides to pay the cost to do what is necessary in order that you might be adopted as his child. That, that's exactly what he has done. He takes you, who were bound so tightly together with sin that you might as well have been in, in handcuffs to it, and he says you are free. He takes you, who had only death in yourself, and tells you that because you're connected to his son's death and resurrection, you now have new life. He takes you, who in and of yourself had no real hope that anything good would come after your death other than the decay of your body. And he gives you instead a great hope that you will live with God and his people forever. He promises that you are his. He promises that when you go through difficult and dangerous times that he will be with you. He assures you that you are precious. So precious that he would do anything necessary to keep you safe and to keep you with him. Even if it meant giving up his own son by nature, Jesus Christ. So don't leave here today as a spoiled brat of God. Thinking that everything you have is just something that you deserve. Instead, leave here today again, humbled by the truth. That you're an adopted child of God 
who understands that God did something for you that he needed not to. And that if he had not done that, if he had not chosen you, well, your life would be wholly different and not in any good way. Leave here today knowing simply this. You are his. And to be his is awesome. Amen. You're invited to rise. Then indeed, may we live with grateful hearts each day, knowing that we are sons and daughters of the King. We ask this in his holy name. Amen. We sing the offering. We're seated at this time as we collect our offerings. As the offerings are brought forward, we sing hymn number 412, verse 1, and then verse 6. 1 and 6. We then go to our Lord with our prayers. And besides those whom we have been praying for for a while, uh, we also pray for Butch Crawford as he prepares to have surgery this month. We pray for Brian Seep as he continues to recover after heart surgery. We pray for Lawrence Mincing, the brother of Richard, uh, who is now in hospice care uh, at his home. We also uh, pray for Don Hinkle as he uh, enters into palliative care uh, as well. 
uh, while living at his home. We go to our Lord with our prayer. O Lord, created in your image and formed for your glory, called by your name and washed clean in baptism, we come to you this day as people of your promise, with the intercessions and prayers for all people as they have need. Blessed Lord, you for wondrously foreshadowed the promise of baptism in the rescue of Noah from the flood and in the passing of your people through the Red Sea. In Christ and by his baptism, you have kept your word and made baptism to be the water of new life in which we live as your children. Give us your Holy Spirit always, that we might live as your kids. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, many nations still live in darkness and in the despair of death, as do many people. Raise up prophets who will address them with your word of truth and accompany your preaching with your Holy Spirit, that those who hear might believe. Grant support and success to all who are doing mission work. We ask you especially to watch over the Ritzman family and their work in Papua New Guinea. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, bless your church. Bless Matthew Harrison, the president of our synod. Donald Fondow, the president of our district. Glenn Kleppe, our circuit visitor and Philip Hoppe, our pastor, and all other church workers. Make them wise unto salvation and faithful in their duties. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of all power, all the might of men is nothing before you. We pray you to place your blessing on all those who serve your people in government, police, firefighters, emergency medical personnel, disaster relief, and our armed forces. Give them good and honest hearts for service. Lead them by your word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of life, we also rejoice before you this day at the gift of life that you have given to the new son of Lucas and Clarissa Payne. Watch over Barrett as he grows and watch over his mother as she recuperates. Bring Barrett to the waters of holy baptism safely. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of compassion and mercy, no suffering passes by you unnoticed. Give to the sick, the hospitalized, and those recuperating from illness, those in treatment and those with troubled mind or heart, your healing presence and your healing peace. Especially hear us today on behalf of Sharon Hagen, Carol Downing, Peggy Harris, Elizabeth Bakowitz, Kathy Schuett, Don Hinkle, Tom Kosky, Bertha Alaska. D. Hemphill, Frank Scaff, Joyce Volk, Evelyn Kratzner, Dick Alleman, Jake Thurber as he recovers after an injury to his leg this week, Butch Crawford, Brian Seek, and Lawrence Mincy. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Eternal God, you have made us your own people by baptism and granted us your Holy Spirit to confess him in word and works. We remember before you all those who have went before us with the same tasks and now rest in Christ from their labors. Make us faithful in our own time and keep us faithful to the covenant you have made with us in baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we do pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into
by the rise to receive the Lord's benediction. Our service concludes on the bottom of page 201. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Remain standing today for our closing hymn. Our closing hymn is number 601. 601. Yeah.